Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be doing question 5 of May, June 2022 question paper, mathematics paper 1. And this is our functions, which is the hyperbola, as you can see here. So, I'm going to read question 5 and then proceed to answer the questions that follow. So let's go. Consider the following equation. So you are given this, g of x is equal to a over x plus p plus q. So you are given that equation. The following information is given. So you are given this information. You are told that the domain of g, you are told that g is defined everywhere except for x is equal to minus 2, which is this is your vertical asymptote. And you are given the x-intercept of g at k, which is the coordinates 1 and 0. Also, you are given the y-intercept of g at n, which is you have 0. Let's go to 5.1. Show that the equation of g is given by g of x is equal to minus 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. So they want us to show that g, which is our equation here, is given by this. Right? So let's go. We know that when you want, when you want to find the equation of a hyperbolic function, y is equal to a over x minus p plus q. Right? This is what we use. So in this case, it's our g of x that we're trying to find. So g of x is equal to this. So what do we have? We have the domain. Uh, we're told on the domain that our graph is the our graph g is defined everywhere, right? Except for x is equal to minus two. That is our vertical asymptote. So we substitute our vertical asymptote here. So g of x is equal to a over x minus p, our vertical asymptote which is minus 2, plus q. And then we simplify it with g of x is equal to a over x plus 2, plus q. Right? Okay. We're done with the first part. We've substituted our vertical asymptote. Right? Then now what do we do? We go to a second part. So we're given the x-intercept. So we're given the, the coordinates of the x-intercept that is 1 and 0. Which means we're going to substitute our 1 here. Our... Oh, so when we substitute our... When we substitute 1 here, the corresponding y value will be 0. Right? So we're given k, which is the x-intercept. So when you substitute your 1 at x here, this corresponding y value is 0 as well given there. So what do we do? We say, okay, we know that 0, which is our y, is equal to a over x. What is our x? Our x is 1 plus 2 plus q, right? And then we simplify this. So we have a, oh, sorry, our 0 is equal to a over 3 plus q, right? And then we multiply by 3 throughout. So 0 times 3 is equal to a over 3 times 3 plus q times 3. Then we simplify. This times this, this is 0, is equal to this, and that go away. You're left with a plus the q. This is what you're left with. Okay. We're done with this part. We can leave it here. Right? What do we do next? We're given the y-intercept at, at point n. We're told the coordinate is 0 and minus half. So which means, same, same principle applied with this one. We substitute our 0 here at x. Its corresponding y value will be the negative half. And then we uh, form another equation like this one here. And then we will solve this equation simultaneously. So what do we do? We say, okay, g, what is our g? g of x. Our g of x is minus half. So y minus half, 
is equal to a over x plus 2. What is our x? Our x is 0 then. So 0 plus 2 plus q. And then we simplify. So we have negative half is equal to a over 2 plus q. Then we multiply by 2 throughout. So negative 1 is equal to uh, negative 1 is equal to a plus 2q. So this is your second equation. So you have two equations, two linear equations, this one and that one. So you must solve this equation simultaneously. So what we do, we say, okay, we have um, this equation here. Then you can just write the second one, 0 is equal to a plus 3q. Right? Then you can use elimination by sub, uh, subtracting the two. 0 minus negative 1 minus 0 is minus 1. A minus A plus 0. 2q minus 3q. You have negative q. So negative 1 is equal to negative q. Divide by negative 1 both sides. You get that your q is equal to 1. Right? Which means we have this part here. This one. Which is consistent with what we have given out here. Then what we're left to find now, we're left to find A. You can use any of these two equations here. You can say, okay, 0 is equal to A plus 3Q. You know your Q is equal to 1. So 0 is equal to A plus 3 times 1. Then you transpose your 3. So A is equal to negative 3. So what is your equation? Your equation will be g of x is equal to a, what is our a? Our a is negative 3, negative 3 over x plus 2 plus q. What is our q? Our q is 1. So we have proved that our g of x is this equation here, which is the same as that equation that they have given us there. 5.2. Write down the, ra the range of g. So, the range is the set of y values to which our x values are mapped to, right? So, our range is the set of y values to which our x values are mapped to, or the set of y values on which, which are going to be used by the graph. So, in this case, our, our, x, our x values will be mapped Everywhere on the real line on a hyper, on a hyperbola, except for the horizontal for the horizontal asymptote, which is y is equal to q, y is equal to y. So our function will our x values will be mapped everywhere except for the position in the real line where there is a horizontal asymptote, which is y is equal to y. So if you write our range, our range will be y is an element. Of real numbers, right? But your y must not be equal to what? 1. Can't be mapped to 1. Or can say y is an element of negative infinity to 1. Union 1 to positive infinity. So any of the two should be the y. I hope it is clear. So Go to 5.3. 5.3, read as follows. Determine the equation H, the exit symmetry of G, in the form Y is equal to MX plus C, where M has a positive gradient. So the way you define the exit symmetry, you must have the equation like this, plus C, with M having a positive gradient. So, you know, uh, hyperbolas have hyperbolic functions. They have uh, eggs of symmetry. So, one has a negative gradient and the other has a positive gradient. So, the gradient of a negative one 
of a negative function a positive line of symmetry is minus one and the gradient of a line of symmetry that have a positive one gradient a line of symmetry that have a positive gradient this gradient is positive one right so in this case we know our gradient if they are saying our gradient is positive then our gradient is positive one for the line of symmetry so we have our function like this y is equal to x plus c our equation for the line of symmetry will have this shape here right we'll have this four here so what we're left to find now is the y-intercept of that line of symmetry or that x of symmetry so how do you find this uh, point here so we use the coordinates of where your intercept where your asymptotes intersect so the equations of the asymptotes here is x is equal to minus 2 and y is equal to 1 right so you have your intercept your inter you have your, x, your asymptotes intersecting at minus 2 and y right so you use this point to find the value of c here so to do this you say okay y our y is 1 is equal to x what is called x our x is minus 2 plus c then you transpose the 2 to the other side you have 1 plus 2 is equal to c which is your c is equal to 3 so that would mean now your x of symmetry would be y is equal to x plus 3. So this is your equation for the x of symmetry. And we're done with this question by filling that in. So we have one more question, 5.4. I'm going to clean this side. So we do 5.4. I'm going to do it here in the middle. So now we're doing 5.4. Write down the coordinates of k prime, the image of k reflected over h. So they want us to find the k prime, right? The image of k reflected over uh, this line h here. So they want us to find the image of k, which is the image of k, or oh, they want us to find the image of k, which is k prime. Uh, when k is reflected over about this line h of x is equal to x plus 3. So now, I'm not very familiar with reflecting about lines like this. The reflection that I'm, I'm more familiar with is y is equal to x. I know this line y is equal to x, right? So, if I'm reflecting along this line to x, y is equal to x, my x and y, they swap around and become what? y and x that's what happens when you reflect about this line so i don't know an easy way of maybe working with this towards that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say okay i know uh, when my line is going through uh, what is it? When my line is going through minus 2 and 1, which is where the asymptotes were meeting, because the equations of the asymptotes here is x is equal to minus 2 and y is equal to 1. So, I know for h of x, the line goes through that point, right? So you are reflecting um, about a line that goes through that point. So, I don't know how to reflect about this line that goes through this point, but I know how to reflect about the line that goes through this point. So, our line, uh, our, this line here goes through 0 and 0, right? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this point to 0, right? And also move my point accordingly. So I'm going to move this point, this, uh, this, uh, the point where the intersection of my asymptote to what? To 0 and 0. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply a transformation from this point to that. I'm going to translate my asymptotes. So when I do that, I'll also do the same thing as that point K. I'm also going to translate it. 
accordingly so that it's not fixed in one position. It's also transformed according to this. Then now, once I have my line going towards the rowing zero, then I'll apply this transformation. And the factor of the line y is equal to x, and I know my things will swap around. Then after doing that, I'm going to return it back to its original position and then apply my transformation, my overall transformation to get the image. So this is what I'm going to do. So to move from this point to this one, uh, a small leg going to uh, move two units up and one unit down. That's what I'm going to do to move from this point to that point. So it's one unit up, one you one unit to uh, sorry, two units to the left, to the right, and one unit down. That's what I'm going to do. Right? Then when I get here, I'm going to reflect about y is equal to x, right? Then after doing that, I'm going to now move back to this point here by adding or by separating two units and adding one unit, which is the opposite of what I did when I was moving away from it. This is what we're going to do. So how are we going to do this? Okay, to move from this to that, you said we're going to add a, 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 two units, right? So we have x and y. It will become what? It will become x plus 2 and y minus 1. Right? Now, I'm here now. Then, I'm going to apply the transformation that I know. Reflect about this line, which is this one here. So, I'll reflect about this line and have what? Uh, then, when, that, when I do that reflection, this will become y minus 1. And x plus 2, that's what it will become. Right? And then what? Then, after applying my reflection, then I'm going to take this thing back to where it was, to its original position. So that means I'll have y minus 1, which is this, minus 2, and x plus 2. Plus one. I'm adding that one there, which means now my transformation, my new transformation is, uh, which is this, is equal to y minus three and and x plus three. So what this means, this is the image. This is the image of anything reflected about this line here. H of x equal to x plus three. So if you reflect, if you reflect about y is equal to x plus 3, or h of x equal to x plus 3, this is the transformation that you will use, right? So now we had our k was 1 and 0. So if one the image of k, it will be k prime, right? k prime, which will be... 1 minus, oh, sorry, it's y minus 3, so it should be 0, minus 3, and what? x, which is 1, plus 3, which is that. So your k bar should be uh, minus 3 and 4. So maybe there is an easy way of doing it, because it's too much, but I don't know that way. So I only know this way it's not very comfortable but here we are 